once you are able to really reliably tell the difference between a full sentence and a fragment, you can do really interesting things with how you connect full sentences. And we're going to be learning four different methods of combining full sentences that will really help the style of your writing and help you control the style of your writing. And you'll know how to use a semicolon, which makes you extra fancy. So you have a handout that has the first two methods on it. The first method that we are going to be looking at is method one, commas and fanboys. Fanboys stands for the words you can use with a comma to connect two full sentences. And it helps me to think of a comma and a fanboy as glue. It's glue-like epoxy is glue. It takes two ingredients to make it strong enough to stick together. And if you only have one ingredient, it's not sticky enough. So you have to have both mixed together to stick two full sentences together. So comma always goes first and then a fanboy. And the fanboys are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. You just need to memorize it. It's part of life. You just gotta do it, sit at stoplights and chant to yourself, for and nor butter yet so, until it sounds really funny, for and nor butter yet so. You need to memorize those because if you do, as long as you know the comma fanboys rule, you can connect any two full sentences. And when you know this rule and start reading writing, you'll find that this is used all the time. And some of the fanboys are used more than others. We'll talk about how to use the rarer ones. You probably use and, but, or, and so all the time. Nor and yet, they're a little harder to use for, a little harder to use. We'll go over those in a second. So when you are going to use a comma fanboy, you have to have a full sentence on it either side. And so you're checking, the first thing you have to do is check and see if you have that full sentence. So Mary went to the store. As the subject, Mary, verb, went, and it makes sense on its own. So then we check the other side. She bought milk. She, subject, bought, verb, makes sense on its own. So we know we have a full sentence on either side. Now that we have determine that, we can use the comma fanboy rule. And in this case, it makes sense to use the comma and the word and. You can use any fanboy that makes sense. So you'll see examples where I picked a fanboy. If you pick a different fanboy, as long as you put it with a comma and it has two full sentences, you're golden. One thing that I recommend is when you think you fit found where the first full sentence ends and the second full sentence begins, try covering them up. Like in this case, I would put my hand over she bought milk and help, that would help me make sure I have a full sentence. And then after I made sure this first part was a full sentence, I would cover it up and just look at the end, she bought milk, full sentence. So that's a little trick if you're not sure whether or not you have a full sentence on either side. Okay, so let's look how to use for. You're gonna notice that the fanboys for and nor, but, or, yet, so, they're all short. You're going to want to use the word because. It's not a fanboy, you can't use it that way. If you ever want to use because, that's when you use the word for. It functions the same way. So let's look at this example. Santo refused to eat the cheese. We have a subject, santo, verb, refused, and it makes sense on its own, full sentence. Second one, he is lactose intolerant. Subject, he is, verb, makes sense on its own. So it passes our full sentence test. So it, I want to use the word because, right? Santa refused to eat the cheese because he is lactose intolerant. It just doesn't work with this rule, but I can use the word for. 
Santa refused to eat the cheese for he is lactose intolerant. It's like fancy because, but it works with a boy rule. Nor is even trickier. And if you ever want to sound like you're fancy in an antique, find a way to use the word nor. So in this example, I have my dog does not like bones. He does not like treats. The trick with nor is both parts of the both sentences have to be negative. So once they're both negative, once you determine they're both full sentences, you can use comma nor. The tricky part is that it doesn't sound right if that's all you do. So my dog does not like born bones, nor he does not like treats. Whoa, doesn't sound right. The reason for that is because you essentially added a double negative. You have a negative here and a negative here, so it sounds funky. So what you have to do is switch the order of the words in the second sentence. So you to do it correctly, it would sound like, my dog does not like bones, nor does he like treats. Mostly just switching the subject verb order and taking out the second negative. You should know how to use this even if you never use it again, except for if you want to feel fancy, and then you should always know how to use it. Okay, so here is where I'm trying to trick you, is fanboys happen everywhere. Sometimes it's part of the fanboy rule, sometimes it's not. So this sounds really similar to our first example. Mary went to the store and bought milk. Well, the fanboy's there, but why isn't there a comma? So we go and look at our, to see if we have full sentences. Mary went to the store. We have a subject, we have a verb, makes sense on its own. If you cover up that first part, all you're left with is bought milk. Who did the buying? Mary, well, it's not part of that second part, so it's a fragment. You can't connect a full sentence in a fragment using this method. So you just leave it alone. You can't put a comma with it. Okay, so have you ever been told you have a comma splice or a run-on sentence? I know I've been told that. I didn't know why I had them or what they were. It actually has to do with this rule. If you ever get told that you have a comma splice or a run-on, what it means is you're not using the comma fanboy rule correctly. If it's a comma splice, it means you're trying to hook two full sentences together with only the comma. You're splicing them together with a comma. You forgot the fanboys. A run-on sentence is the opposite. It means you hook the two full sentences together with only a fanboy and you forgot the comma. So remember both ingredients. It takes both ingredients to make it strong enough, to make it sticky enough to hold the two full sentences together. So at this point, you can stop the video, pause it, and go practice on the exercises for part one and two, or you can listen to the next part of this video and do the whole exercises. So, if you decided to keep listening and do method two, method two is about the semicolon. The semicolon is, it's the dot with the comma underneath. And a semicolon, it's like super glue. It is strong enough all by itself to hold two full sentences together. So the pattern is full sentence, semicolon, full sentence. You don't get to use it to hook sentences together, unless you have a full sentence on either side. So if we look back at our original examples, Mary went to the store, full sentence. She bought milk, full sentence. Semicolon, you just stick it right in the middle. It's super glue, it holds them together. Now it sounds different. Mary went to the store, she bought milk. It's faster this way. The semicolon speeds up sentences, so you have to, if you want to make it fast, one way of making your writing fast because you want it to be tense or something exciting is happening is to use a semicolon. 
So this next one, Santa refused to eat the cheese. He is lactose intolerant. We know we have two full sentences. All you have to do is stick it in the middle of the two. This last one, my dog does not like bones. He does not like treats. Stick it in the middle of the two full sentences. I think this is a really good example of where this is grammatically correct with the semicolon in the middle, but it's not necessarily the most enjoyable of sentences. So now I want you to try the exercises. And when you're done, you can check them against the answer sheets. Thank you for listening to this video.